just remembered that we're going to be recording this call. I just hit record to get started. Um, another thing you might notice is that we have an interpreter on this call. So Manuela is um, on the video screen with headphones. She's waving right now. We wanted to make sure that if there's Spanish speaking members of our community who want to participate, that they have the same ability to participate as all of us. So what I'm gonna ask you to do, English is the default language, but it's really helpful if in your menu, the very bottom, the same place you're looking for your raise hand button, you're also, there's gonna be a button that says interpretation and it has a little globe, looks like a globe. If you click on that, it lets you pick your language. So if you're going to speak in English today and you want to be able to hear the meeting in English, please pick English. If you prefer to speak in Spanish, whether you can speak English or not, please pick Spanish because we have that resource available. We're very fortunate both in this virtual world and to have Manuela available to help make sure that we can all participate today. Okay, I'm trying to think. Um, the um, one thing I will say is that there may be some people on this call who really, really need to get some in-person support if you're having a really hard time at your home. And so we wanted to make sure that we put out a Colorado Crisis Service number. This is the place to go if you need one-on-one -on -one attention. Okay, this is a group meeting. We're gonna do our best to answer your questions and try to help out if you're having a hard time. But we just wanna make sure that this phone number is really clear for all people on the call. And you can be a kid, you can be an adult, you can be a teenager, it doesn't matter. There are people on this phone line who can help you through whatever you're going through. Okay, so we're gonna um, remind you of that phone number again at the very end, but we just wanted to make sure that it's front and center as we get started. I think with that, I'm going to um, probably stand back and I would like to ask um, the council, so we have several council members on the call. There are three who have been signed up to like really actively listen and answer kids' questions. There's some other council members who are simply listening because they wanted to hear your voices, but we didn't wanna overpower your voices with grown-up voices. So I think what I would do is ask each of the council members who are in an active lead role to quickly introduce yourself. And then maybe, Mara, we could go into your introduction. I think you're gonna introduce some of the partners on the call. Um, hi, I'm Rachel Friend. I'm a member of Boulder City Council. And I wanted to say, um, Sarah, I'm not sure, is, is Sam on the call? Because I think he might've had a conflict arise. You're muted. I think he might be right. I'm not seeing him on the call. So um, I think we're well represented by council, but I will watch him if he comes in as an attendee and I okay. can him in. So just wanted to um, let people know. I don't think that Mayor Weaver will be here, but he sends his regrets. Um, and again, I'm Rachel Friend. I am one of the active listeners today. So I'm looking forward to hearing um, your questions and ways that you think uh, maybe we could help in this time of COVID and what you think we could be doing better. And with that, I'll turn it over to the other active listener on this call. And that would be me. I'm Aaron Brockett. I've been on the city council for about four and a half years now. And, um, you know, staying at home along with everybody else, I also have uh, two kids who are in uh, BBSD. Uh, they're a little older, they're teenagers, but we're all working from home and learning from home and doing the best we can here. Looking forward to hearing from everybody today. Okay, and then we have um, Junie and Adam, our other council members who are on the call today. Um, I'm sure if you have a question specific for them, I'm sure they'd be happy to jump in, but mostly they just want to hear from you. Um, Mara, do you want to go ahead with our introductions then of our other folks? One question, one thing I would just ask is if we do have Spanish speakers on the call, it's helpful for Manuela if you kind of chunk up your words. <laughs> so after a sentence or two, just give her a quick minute to catch up. This is very challenging to do simultaneous interpretation when we're not in the same room. So she asked me to just make that point. So Mara, handing over to you. Thank you, Sarah. Welcome everybody. It is so great to see so many kids signing on. My name is Mara Mincer and I'm the director of a program called Growing Up Boulder. We're Boulder's child and youth friendly city initiative, which means we get kids voices in city planning. We're based out of the University of Colorado's Cedar Center, and we actually are a partnership between the City of Boulder, the University of Colorado, and Boulder Valley School District. And so today I will be helping facilitate our session. 
So as I mentioned, growing up Boulder's job is to listen to kids like you and get your ideas into city projects. And so what that means right now is that we're connecting you to Boulder City's leaders so that you can ask questions about how COVID-19 is affecting your lives and your day-to-day -day experience. So on the call, I have myself, but I also have a few helpers here. Um, we have, um, and maybe as I say the people's names, you guys can wave. Um, we've got Naomi Maid uh, Modell from Boulder Valley School District. She is a school counselor at Crestview. We have Chris DeMarco and Sarah Weatherly, both from Mental Health Partners. And the three of them are really experts who will be able to answer any trickier questions when it comes to emotional and social health needs. We also um, have listening in Kathy Hill and Vanessa Schatz, who are both working with Growing Up Boulder. And so they're also here on the call. So kids, part of what is really exciting about today is that you're actually part of a global and national trend of cities connecting with children. So in the countries of Denmark and Norway, the prime ministers there actually had press conferences just for young people. And the governor in the state of Rhode Island also got something like 13,000 questions from young people, which she spent an hour and a half answering. So today it's your turn to do that. And I just want to say this has been a tough time, I think, for a lot of us. I don't know about you, but for me, it can be a roller coaster day to day of what my emotions feel like. And everyone who works in the field of social and emotional health says that's completely normal. So I just wanted to, you to know if you are feeling that way, it's, it's very normal. Um, so without any further ado, oh, and I also want to give one last shout out to all the parents and caregivers and teachers out there who are working so hard to work with all of us. So I'm going to turn this conversation over um, to the kids to begin asking questions to our city council members. And I wanna thank everyone who's involved here today. This is a real team effort. Bienvenidos, thank you. So just as a reminder, if you are um, a young person on the call today and you have a question you would like to ask, we'd like you to raise your hand using the raise hand button on the bottom of the screen um, and so that we can know that we should unmute you and you have a chance to talk to council. I'm not seeing any raised hands yet. Mara, oh, we've got one. We'll go ahead. Oh, they're coming in now. We'll go ahead and ask those questions. And I also know, Mara, that you got some questions that folks sent in in advance of this. And so if we have a little lull in the questions, maybe we can raise some of those. But let's go ahead and hear from the children who are on the call now. And can I just explain something? So I see lots of great questions from the kids. Maybe what we'll do is ask you um, to put your questions again in, even though I know you already wrote them and if you forget them, that's okay. But you could put them in the Q&A box so that then we'll see it there and it'll remind all of us to respond. If not, I have the list of your questions too. Okay. okay, so I'm getting a question about what if we've already submitted our questions. So you have a couple of different options. As Mara said, you can either type it again in the Q&A box, which is also in your menu, or when we unmute you, when you raise your hand, you can just ask your question. And then if we have some time where nobody has questions to ask, Mara has got the other questions in the list and we'll start working through those. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and Ryan, do you think you could recognize Evan first, please? Hi, Evan. Yeah, I'm Evan from Watershed. <laughs> I was wondering, so I've been hearing like a lot of like silence, like at least like once a day or something. I was wondering why there were like more silence than usual. Do you mean like outside and in your neighborhood? Yeah, yeah just like a lot of like police sirens are something uh, going by. So I'm gonna ask- oh, sirens, okay, sirens. I'm gonna ask whichever council member would like to respond to raise your hand so we see you and then you can unmute yourself and answer. Okay, so Rachel. I'll take a stab at it. Um, I don't think that um, crimes that would result in police sirens are necessarily way up right now, but I think that maybe because traffic is so low 
we can hear everything better. So like there's not, usually you might have like cars going by your house and it might drown out some sirens from a couple blocks away. But right now the world is so quiet and um, there's so much less going on that we can hear everything around us a lot better. So I think that might be one reason. Then I would invite Aaron to see if he has uh, anything to add. Yeah, that's a great point, Rachel. You know, things things are a lot quieter, right? So we're and we're paying more attention. I know that I'm like I'm I'm a little nervous, and so when I hear something out of the ordinary, it, it pops out to me a little bit more. But I think also our police and our firefighters and our open space rangers and everyone are also being really extra active right now um, to try to help out with the situation that we're in. Like we hear um, about folks who are worried, like maybe there'll be a, a group of college students having a party when they're not supposed to. And so then their neighbors get um, worried and concerned that that's a danger. And so then they'll call the police and the police will come and check on that and, and tell people if that's not an okay thing to do. So I think they are being, um, you know, all of, our, all of our officers and such are being extra busy right now, kind of dealing with this strange situation that we're in. I just want to also add, Evan, that was a great question and great good observation question. of sort of COVID world right now. Thank you. And I see Naomi would like to answer as well. Naomi. Hi, just another thought to add to what's already been said. I agree with it all. I think when we're in school, we're so busy and focused in our classroom and with the activities of the day that we're also not noticing those sounds as much. So um, our daily activity has shifted and our awareness has shifted. So I don't know that the frequency is any difference, but as you've said previously, we're just, it's quieter world right now and we're not quite as engaged as we were. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for your question, Evan. Ryan, I think we have Greta up next. Greta, we'd love to hear um, what your question might be. Is when do I get to see my school friends again? Such a question. good question. Thank you so much for asking, Greta. And I see Aaron has his hand raised. So, Aaron. Yeah, Greta, that's such a great question. And I and hi, Greta. It's, I also want to answer because Greta is my neighbor uh, and lives just around the corner from me. I can almost see, uh, Greta, your back door from where I'm sitting in my kitchen right now. <laughs> so thanks for coming on and, and answering that question. You know, the I mean, the short answer is we just we just don't know, right? Like we we don't know what's coming next. And that's part of what's so hard about this situation is that um, we're not sure exactly what's coming next and exactly how fast things are going to change. But I know the schools are working super hard on getting kids back in school in the fall, if at all possible. So their goal is to have you and your friends back in their schools back in, in the fall um, when things would normally happen. But they're not sure if it's going to be exactly the same as it was before. It'll probably be at least a little bit different. But I think there are some things that we can all do to help that because if everyone's staying safe and staying healthy, then there won't, we won't need to stay away from each other in the same way. So I think the, that if we all keep working on staying home as much as we can and wearing masks when we go to the grocery store and go other places and making sure that, that people you know, are really staying safe and healthy, that's gonna help the schools get back to normal as soon as possible and make it so that you can go, go see all your friends in your, in your usual way again. Thank you. Uh, I agree, that was a great question. And I would add, I think that um, the um, adults who are working in public health are working hard to give us a, a map that we can follow to say, if we do these five things, then it's gonna be really safe for the kids to go back to school. And that's what we, all I want is for ourselves to be able to go back to work and for you to be able to go see your um, good friends and um, for us to be able to hug each other when we run into friends at the grocery store again. So um, part of what we're doing is, is things like some of us have already been sick and we might not even know it because um, that's just how this virus works. And then we want to make sure that we can figure out how many people have already had it and then um, do a little bit more testing so that we can see what the numbers are and then safely um, get us back to school and get us back um, closer to life as normal. And like Aaron said, it's going to be a little bit of a gradual transition, but I think that 
there's going to be um, at least some some people going for some hours. Like I have a, you know, there are different countries are doing it in different ways. So my friend who lives in Switzer Switzerland, her um, kids went back to school this week, and they're just going half days. So hopefully by fall we will be um, rolling out at least some some part measures, and then maybe by um, a little bit after that we can be back to kind of kind of our our old usual. Thanks for the question, Greta. Um, thank you. Did anyone else from our panelists want to respond? Yeah, Chris. Hi, Greta. I think a lot of people are missing their friends right now. I think everybody here on the panel probably is too. We want to give hugs to our friends and, and see them again and, and do things live. Um, so just want to acknowledge it's hard right it's really hard for us to be apart and it means that we have to be more creative than we've ever been before how we connect with the people we really like like you know can we send letters can we do emails can we do chat time and it's not exactly the same but we but it's what we what we can do at this point and it's okay to feel sad about it too and and really say that because that actually makes it a little easier when we can acknowledge how we're feeling about it then our brain can get a little freer to think about how we can be creative to to still be present with each other even if we can't can't uh, give hugs or get close Thank you very much, Chris. All right, um, Ryan, is there another, let's see, do we have another question? Or a hand, I see there's hand raised. How about Charlie? Does Charlie Absolutely. have a question? I see the hand raised. My question is, um, um, can, when are the swimming pools gonna be open? Good question, I know, okay. That's a city question. Let's see, who would like to answer that? Okay, Aaron, wanna take a try? Yeah, well, this is another one of those we don't know exactly answers, but um, I know the, the we're getting this question a lot. A lot of people are really ready to get back into the swimming pools and particularly with the warm weather coming. So, you know, those those pools are run by our parks department and the people at the Parks Department are working super hard on figuring out how to reopen all the parks um, facilities safely as soon as possible. And pools is right at the top of the list of what they're working on. So, you know, the good thing is, is that, you know, pools have a lot of um, uh, disinfectants in them, you know, to, to keep to kill germs and such. So that that helps out. But um, so we don't know exactly when, but the hope is that it won't be too long from now. And it'll probably start with the outdoor pool um, because that's just a little bit of a safer environment than the indoor pools. But um, so we're working super hard on it, but not sure when. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. Good question. Anyone else want to respond to that one or that's pretty clear? Well, as clear as we can be at the moment. It, it's clear. I would just add um, one interesting um, thing that our parks and recs um, director emailed in response to that question that um, a grown-up emailed in was that 35% of our swimmers are over age 60. So that's the group of people who are at most at risk. So I think they're trying to be extra cautious about who's coming to the pools and how we can be really careful with that population. So I, I'm, I am right with um, Charlie. I want to get back in the pool too. So I'm hoping that we can do it safely and quickly. Great question. Thank you, Charlie. Thanks. Okay. Mara, we have a question that came in through the Q&A. We can get back to the hands raised, but maybe I could just call that up for folks. That would be great, yeah. So the Q&A is, and this might be a question that Naomi might be able to answer, I'm not sure, but what schools do you think will reopen in the fall? Because schools have different square footage and only a certain number of people can be in a certain amount of space. So I think the question really is how does the size of the school and the building, how will that factor into that decision? And I'll just say if Naomi, if you don't feel comfortable answering that, I think I can take a crack at it, but feel free if you would yeah, like. I, sure, I can try. Um, and as everybody is saying in response to questions, the bottom line is we don't exactly know. 
But I don't think that square footage necessarily, what we need to do is keep a distance, right? We need to make sure we're physically distanced no matter the size of your school. And so I think what this, the district is trying to do is come up with a way that makes it equitable and available to all students. And they have five different scenarios right now they're looking at and thinking about to take into account all the different needs and aspects. So the bottom line is we want kids to be back in the buildings as soon as it's possibly safe. And there might be a few phases that we do first leading up to that. So I would start with that, but the district and Rob Anderson, our superintendent, they are so concerned and actively involved in trying to figure this out. Thank you very much, Naomi. And I just want to add too, based on my reading of what they're talking about with a five phase plan, it may go back and forth. You know, there may be times where we're in the school building and there may be other times where we're safer at home, um, but they're going to be also looking at what works for each family. And so really there's going to be a variety of different needs and different ways that it's being met, but the school's goals are to get the kids learning to have you interacting with your peers and your teachers as much as possible um, and to keep you healthy. And so there are a variety of ways of doing that. And could I just add one more thought, Mara, to that? I've been having a lot of conversations. I've been going into classrooms in my role and I've been doing groups and meeting with students individually throughout this time. And what I'm hearing, and I'm at the elementary level, but what I'm hearing is that some students feel ready to go back and see everybody. And there are some students who are liking a bit of home learning. They're actually appreciating some aspects of it that feel more comfortable to their learning style or their way of being in school. So there's also gonna be a flexibility possibly for students based on what might work best for them, not just if the school building is open. So we're, we're trying to take a look at that as well. Thank you for adding that, that's really important. Hey Mary, we've got some more hands raised if you want to call on folks. Did, did Niall ask his question before I was trying? Okay, so Niall, it's your turn. Niall, we're going to go ahead and, and promote you to a panelist for a moment uh, because it is an older version of Zoom. Uh, and so you may notice a, a quick flip on and off on your screen, but we're not losing you. We're just kind of moving you to a different space uh, for the moment. There we go. And I'll go ahead and unmute and you can ask your question. Okay, so um, my question is how during times like this where we can't actively be interacting with each other, um, can we add a social aspect um, for students? Such a good question. And I think you're voicing the concern I've heard from a lot of young people. So. Who would like to respond to that one? I will say, I think it's probably a better question um, for some of our experts rather than city council, because I don't feel like an expert in student socializing um, and, and would be taking a stab at it. So I would first like to hear from the experts. Although it looks like maybe Aaron is an expert. Well, not at all. But I'll, I, I will just say, you know, with uh, as I have two teenagers uh, at home. And so just sort of speaking for my own family, they're having such a challenge with this. And um, but my son in particular, who's very social, but um, he's doing a lot of online interaction. So let's put it that way. So lot, lots of chatting on chat channels and video conferences. And, and he, he likes to play a lot of games. And so they're doing online gaming and and so you know until we can all sit sit down at a table and and chat um you know the technology is is a lot of where it's at but i'll let the experts talk yeah and i feel like there are ways to do this um using technology however i feel like um casey at least i don't i can't speak for other schools but um, I haven't been, I haven't had like social time since basically the beginning of, um, stay at home. Yeah. 
super hard. And I'm going to let Sarah Weatherly um, take a response to this one. Are you muted? Okay. There you go. Hi. Sarah, you're on mute. The social, can you hear me now? Thanks. Um, I have trouble with the mute button. <laughs> um, but I think that the social piece has been one of the most challenging across the board for, for kids, teens, some adults. Um, and I don't know if your question was more specifically related to when school is back, how are they going to facilitate it or just in general. Um, you know, I think that it is this time where um, we all need to get creative about how do we maintain connection and socializing in a way that's meaningful for us during this time. So for some people that looks like a lot of, you know, um, technology, you know, maybe um, emailing with friends or texting with friends or talking with friends on phone or playing games. There's so many um, apps and things you can do um, to socially interact with people um, using technology. Um, but there are also, you know, I think as the other thing to think about if that, you know, real face-to-face -face contact or, or real connection is, is slowly finding ways of, of, and again, given your comfort level, your parents' comfort level, you know, um, finding ways of maybe physically seeing your, your friend, you know, from a distance, um, in, uh, you know, driving by or, um, you know, eventually um, being able to do some activities where you're maintaining social distance with one other person or two other people um, for shorter periods of time. Um, but it is a good, it is a good um, question, and I think it's on most people's minds. I will add, um, oh, just from, from an adult perspective, I have started doing some social distance walking in neighborhoods and um, scheduled to bike with my son to meet a friend of his and do a like social distance lunch at 29th Street Mall yesterday. And so I think some of that stuff's coming online a little bit and it's gonna make it more possible for us to do some in real life things because I, I agree with, um, I think what Niles is saying is, or Niall is saying is that it, um, the virtual version is not cutting it long-term. Like we do need some, some even face-to-face, -face, six feet apart, 10 feet apart interaction. Um, it's, it's, we're all missing it. And so I think that it's, um, we're, we're moving towards that and there are some safe ways to do it right now. Um, and I'm kind of curious, I don't know if, um, oh, they get off. I was gonna ask if Sam and Lucy were still on. Their mom is a teacher at Casey and I wondered if she had any insights in what Casey in particular might be um, pulling together. Thanks. Yeah, my things? question is- Go ahead, Niall. Um, my question or my, what I was trying to say is that I think that um, online communication could do well. I just feel like that's not happening as much as it could be. Ah, okay. So I was wondering, because for me, when I think about social part of school, for my kids, I have two teenagers, it's really their extracurriculars, right? So are there ways that the school community could um, be promoting more ways for the clubs and the different interest groups to still get together, right? So my kids, they're in a drama club. And so yesterday they had an online drama club meeting and instead of just all looking at each other on the screen, they kind of played this fun scavenger hunt in the house. So they were running around my house picking up things that were cues from the scavenger hunt and coming back and showing them to their friends. So those are kind of club or school activities that are not necessarily about the academics, but I know for my kids that's a really important part of the school day and I think that's what I'm hearing from you as well, Niall. Now it's going to be a little trickier because we're going into summer as well. So not all those clubs would be meeting, but um, we'd be interested to give your feedback back up to Boulder Valley School District and see if there might be some ways that some of those teachers who are helping to facilitate those clubs could make some opportunities exist. 
And I also wanted to ask Niall, you know, kids are some of the best problem solvers and thinkers we have. So Niall, do you have specific ideas that have been bubbling up in your head that you want to suggest? Um, so early, kind of a few months ago, I was trying to start like a Zoom call that just anyone could join and it could just be um, for students to chat in. Um, and so that was that was the idea I was starting out with. Um, and talking to Casey, um, I got a lot of a lot of concerns about the safety of Zoom. Um, and so I've been looking into different alternate ways to do it since then, but I haven't gotten very far. Um, because Zoom seems like a fairly, fairly secure way to do things all in all. I feel like they have some pretty, um, they've worked on their security. Um, yeah, well, I think you give us some great food for thought. And I think it's something that we can continue to talk about and think about offline as well of what are some of the best platforms for having safe conversations amongst kids um, and I know Google is one that that's been used, but um, let's keep thinking about that. And I really appreciate your asking this and also helping brainstorm some answers. I want to um, let Can I also just um, tack on that it would be and I, I see we've got Sage and Liliana and Christopher in, in the queue and a lot of other kids still on the call. I'd, I'd welcome their feedback too on that question. How else can we help to facilitate interaction that would feel good for you all. Yes, I mean, actually, if you all have answers to some of each other's questions, when we call on you, please do share them because that's just as useful as anything we experts have to say. We, we can all problem solve here. So Sage, would you like to ask your question or speak? Sure, I can ask a question. Okay, um, my question is, what do you guys think it's going to be like going back to like kind of like real life? Like, do you think there are going to be like lots of rules kind of slowly going back in or do you think people will just kind of like jump back in? Like, do you think, yeah, that's my question. Thank you, Sage. Great question. Aaron's going to answer that one. Yeah, it's, it's a great question, Sage, and we're all thinking about this. I think the answer is it's going to be a little bit at a time. You know, so it's it's not going to be like, you know, June 1st, everything's back to normal. You know, it's going to be a, a, a very gradual process, right? And our governor, Jared Polis, has talked about this, about you know, his his plan is for the whole state to change, make, make things a little bit more accessible, maybe every week or two, and then see how it goes and make sure people aren't getting sick. And then assuming they're not, then in another week or two, open up something else and, and release another restriction and make things a little easier another way. So this can be a little step by step. Um, just last night, Rachel and I um, and Adam and all the other council members were um, at a meeting last last night and talking about how, how restaurants might open back up again. Because in a few weeks, people are gonna be allowed to eat at restaurants again, but it's not gonna be the same way as before. You're not gonna be at tables a couple feet apart from each other. And so we're talking about, hey, can we uh, close parts of streets so that restaurants could set up tables where there had been places for parking cars? And so then people could sit, you know, at a table six feet away from the next table out in the air where it's safer um, and be able to eat at a restaurant that way. So I think expect a lot of stuff like that, where as things start to come back, they come back not the same, but kind of spaced more widely, not as many people. And then over time, things will kind of gradually get back to, to the way they used to be. Thank you, that's cool. Yeah, great question. That was a good answer, Aaron. And I, I think it was a great question too from Sage. And I, I think some of it could be, as Sage just said, cool. And maybe even like some awesome innovations are gonna come out of this that's gonna be better than it was last January. Like January, 2021 might be a cooler place to live than January, 2020 was. Um, in, in terms of, you know, if, if we take over some parking spots for tables, that might be great to eat outside all summer, but we'll see. 
And like since people are using their cars less and stuff, like less pollution and stuff like that. Yes, yes, that's exactly right. Great, great observation, Sage. And actually, Sage, um, there's a map, and I can share it, that shows all the places around the world right now that are closing streets, cities all over, and what they're closing them for to accommodate for some of this. So um, people are, are thinking about this in all these creative ways around the world. That's cool. Yeah. And I see, um, I think someone, Evan had asked a related question that goes along with this about which stores are going to open. And um, does anyone want to comment on sort of the phasing in of store openings? Um, go ahead, Rachel. Uh, yeah, no, I would probably defer to you. I don't think I've, I've um, paid perfect attention to that. But we're sort of slowly phasing in retail, I think, as of last weekend. And so some stores now you can like call and make an appointment and they're letting in a limited number of people at a time um, to come in and shop and you have to wear a mask. Um, and then for the city of Boulder, we're looking, you know, at, at the um, buildings that we control, like the pools and the rec centers and um, the city buildings as sort of like what is most important to open quickest and how do we do that safest. So it's, it's just this like phased series of opening some things like 25% and then 50% and then hopefully all the way if we stay um, if we keep contagion low, basically. So, Aaron, if you have any more detailed information. Well, yeah, I think fire. that's that's right. And just that retail stores, you know, like a, a place like, um, you know, REI, say, that was closed before, um, they're now allowed to be open. I don't know if REI is, but because every business is making their own decision. So um, they're allowed to deliver things to the curb where you could pick it up right outside the store, but also to let people into the store. Um, but you do have to wear a mask if you're going to go in a store. And so um, every business is kind of making their own decision about whether they're going to open now or wait a little while or so it's going to be gradual. One thing I've noticed about the stores have opened is sometimes there's going to be lines outside the store because they're only letting a certain number of people in the store at a time. So that's a different thing than we're used to when we go shopping. We usually just walk in and get what we need and leave. So um, that's going to require some patience from all of us and build in a little extra time if you have something you need to go pick up at the store because they're just trying to keep us all safe. Yeah, and it, thanks for that, Sarah. And, and I'll just say, like, uh, we all do have to be patient right now, right? Like, things are taking longer. and And so you just have to expect that and try to, to be okay with that. Um, and I also, I like to think, you know, things are so different right now. I kind of feel like I'm in a movie sometimes, you know, I'm like, instead of just walking in a store, I'm waiting in a line six feet apart with a mask on. It's like, wow, this is really different. So I think it, it can be kind of fun sort of imagining that you're in a, in a, some interesting science fiction movie too. I love that. Thank you. Um, Lily, I know you've been waiting to ask some questions, and I would love to hear what you have to say. Um, so my question is, um, when can we go to stores um, without wearing masks? Very good question. All right, who would like to try and answer that? Rachel? I think it's going to be a while. My um, my guess is it's going to be until we have a vaccine, um, and that's still a number of months away. But basically, we wear masks so that I don't breathe on you, and if I have something, give it to you, and if you have something, you're not giving it to me. So it's sort of protecting me and protecting you. If we both have them, we're sort of um, diminishing any chance that, that we could get sick. So until we have a way to um, know that we can breathe on each other without making each other sick, because stores are, are closed spaces with like air conditioning that makes the air you know circle all around um, it's just safer right now to wear masks and so my understanding is probably not till we have a vaccine and and that could be um, I, don't, I don't know what the current current timeline is on that but I think it's at least a couple months off yeah a few months I would expect a few months I would say it's gonna be a while yeah and I would add, and I appreciate your question, Liliana, I don't love wearing the masks. Like, I also don't love brushing my teeth. You know, there's just some things that I do because I'm told I have to do them to stay healthy. So that's how I feel about masks. I just, I don't love it. I just do it. 
Brushing my teeth is one of my least favorite things to do in life. <laughs> right? It, it, do you like flossing a little bit less even? Like, I don't like any of that. So maybe it's the whole like oral cavity, flossing, brushing, and then you put a mask on put it. Put a mask like, on it. Some of my least favorite things to do in life. <laughs> well, right just, keep, just keep in mind, if you're wearing a mask, you can't brush your teeth. So there's that. <laughs> <laughs> I was Use wondering it. though, it's a good question because I've been I've been wondering if how young people do feel about wearing masks, you know? With one caveat though, I think I don't know Liliana how old you are, but I think that our mask rule only applies to people over age twelve. And so you can all right. So I think you I mean, I think it's still safe. I defer to your parents on this, but um it, I think mask use is only required for people 12 and older. Does anybody else have that information? Not that I'm discouraging it. It's kind of like I would never discourage you from brushing your teeth. Like it's, it's a healthy thing to do. I believe that that's true in terms of what the rule says, but I know a lot of families are having their kids, unless they're little, little kids, wear a mask just to, to make sure that everybody's safe. We've kind of had some fun color coding our masks. So making them match, you know, our outfits and things like that at our house. But I know it's not very fun. And what I don't like is you can't see people smile at you. Yeah. yeah. Um, so when you come up to somebody, you know, it's a little harder to read their face or see, make a connection if you can't see that smile. I've actually seen some fun masks that have smiles painted on them. <laughs> but and I'm going to add one more thing. I think it's going to be long enough that you want to have like a cool mask. So like today I found a friend who's going to make me a mask and I'm going to go online and find like, I like rainbows and I like like retro 1970s, 80s stuff. So I'm going to spend tonight looking on the internet for some cool fabric that has um, a rainbow on it and like a mask that I would really, that would bring me some joy to wear. So maybe one way to do it would just be to like go all in on the masks and find a couple and see if somebody will make you ones that are like awesome. I have a reversible mask that um, has snowflakes on one side and then on the other side, there's like these cool flowers. That's awesome. That's awesome. Nice. Joy joyful. Yeah. Thank you so much, Lily. That was really, really good questions and really good thoughts too. I'm gonna ask if Christopher, Chris has a question he or she would like to ask. Christopher, you'll experience the same thing where we'll allow you to talk. It'll uh, just jolt your screen for a little bit and we'll be able to hear you in a moment. Yeah, so I was just wondering, um, like, so I know that school is going to be different, but I know that I, I do cross country in the fall or not yet yeah, in the fall. And I was wondering how that is that going to work? Like, are the sports going to re, are we going to still be doing sports or is that going to be not, not going to be happening? That's a good question. Um, to which I actually don't know the answer, but let's see, Aaron, do you, do you have an idea? Well, well, I mean, this is one of those things that we don't know as well. You know, we really, we don't know, but Christopher, I think, Cross country is a great sport to be doing. I think you have a much higher chance of coming back than say football. Um, so I think the, like the team sports or the contact sports, um, those will, who knows, um, I'd be surprised if, uh, if say there was football and soccer first thing. Cross country though, you know, that seems more likely. You can all run a few feet apart and not bunch up and you know, so I, I can't say that it'll happen, but I, I'm guessing your chances are better than most sports. Yeah, I, I think that generally speaking, sports might go the same way as masks in terms of when we have a vaccine is when we can really expect to open some of that back up. But I want to especially um, thank Christopher and Liliana for patiently waiting. Um, they were in line for like at least 40 minutes to ask these questions. So I just want to give a shout out for being cool and patient and um, sticking it out to ask those questions. And, and I um, love that people are staying on to hear each other. That's really Yeah, wonderful. it's very cool. Um, and, and also cross country is a great thing to be doing right now because it's one of the few things that you don't need equipment for, you don't need other people for, even if the team's not meeting, you know, we can all be running. And so um, keep it up. It's great sport anyhow. Yeah, thank you. Mara, we've got a question from Evan in the Q&A. Yeah, I see that Evan said, 
Um, what are we going to do with our upcoming holidays? Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, birthdays? Rachel? That, uh, that's hard to predict. Uh, Halloween, you know, going door to door feels unlikely in 2020. Like I, I hate to say it. Um, and Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. And we usually have like 35 people, including my elderly parents. And I don't, um, I doubt that'll happen. So I will say what we've been doing, like it was my son's 16th birthday last week or two weeks ago. Um, and we just set out a lot of chairs in the front yard and had them all eight feet apart and everybody wore masks and um, brought their own food. And we had a, a little small party with just my family in the front yard where nobody touched, nobody shared, but we all got to just tell stories about, um, you know, things we love about my son. So it's, I don't think we're going to be um, getting back to the usual, you know, places that we go to celebrate birthday parties in general in the next few months. So this is a year and uh, a year that's going to stand out as a little bit different. And my son did say, I'll always remember this birthday. Like it was different. It was unique. And um, so there are some good things about, you know, mixing it up. Yeah. And I'll, I'll say that, I mean, we, again, we don't know. I mean, birthdays and my son just had a birthday recently and it was just the four of us you know best birthday ever stuck at home with your parents right um but uh you you know like thanksgiving that's six months from now you know could you have your eight or ten family members together for thanksgiving you might well be able to that might be that might be fine by thanksgiving so um you know halloween going to everybody's door in five yeah, you know i'm not sure how great the chances are but you know as 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 we get um, further along in this process and assuming that things continue to get better like they are right now, I think the ability to have, you know, small groups like family members and things that's going to come back. So um, again, we, we don't know when, but. Thank you. And I see Sarah, um, would you, Sarah Weatherly, would you like to share with us? Yeah, I was just thinking about, I think it's great that you brought up the idea of the holidays because I think one of the things that's hard about this is we have traditions or things we do in families or things we that are consistent and predictable and they sort of help us um, feel comfortable and secure and all of that and this has been a time where we haven't had those in the same way so and so um you know that probably leaves some people feeling um just less secure or um you know not having the things that they're used to doing and so it's it's hard and it's also a time where we get creative and innovative and find new ways of marking those traditions you know so maybe you'll figure out some fun thing to do for halloween if you can't go door to door that'll um you know be a new tradition well you know it'll still be safe to toilet paper somebody's house so, don't, but don't do that. Just kidding. Sorry. I was going to nominate Aaron if we were going there. But. <laughs> I mean, I actually, at this point, up. at this point, actually getting a bunch of toilet paper might be welcome, you know, with the I, You know, I did. I went to a friend's 50th birthday, same thing, my neighbor front yard, a gazillion feet apart, and I gave her um, a roll of toilet paper as a gift. And, and you know, because in, in COVID and, and a little bit of hand sanitizer, a little bit of a gag gift, but it's true. Like, <laughs> We more have, we're changing things up, more precious, yes. Well, we have a sense of what matters here. Um, I see we have hands up again. Sage, would you like to ask a question again? Um, sure, I was gonna ask, like, I know airports, or at least the Denver airport's open, but um, when do you guys think it will be, like, safe to, like, go on planes again? I mean, I'll just say, um, Sage, great question. I mean, the, the, air, the airplanes are running, right? Like, like you can get on a plane and fly somewhere. Um, and so it's really kind of, it, it's a matter of your family's decision about, you know, what, when your family feels like that's a safe thing for, for your family. Um, so that's, it's a conversation to have, have with your, your parents. And it's kind of like we're all sort of debating like what is what what risk is worth it right now like you know for a while is it worth going to the grocery store is it worth now going to pick up takeout food is it worth going to rei is it worth getting on the airplane so you know as as 
as things like level out and even out, it's, it's going to be a little bit more worth it to do some of the things that we used to do. But for a while, I think we're all sort of playing it pretty safe. So Aaron's right. Like if you had something really important you needed to fly to, you'd, you'd mask up really well and use hand sanitizer, wear gloves, and you could make that trip. Um, but there's a little bit of risk in, in just exposing yourself to virus. So, um, you know, yeah. And I guess, and if, if your question behind that is sort of saying, well, and when might we take a trip somewhere to go visit someplace that would be fun? That's not going to be for a while. You know, we're travel, what we would call non-essential travel, travel where you really don't have to do it. It's going to be a while before that's something that people really do. Yeah. And because all the stuff where you would be going is, is closed anyways. Like, you know, the museums aren't open and the, you know, whatever you go to see in cities are, are, are just, shut down yeah I want to, it's uh, unfortunate thank you very much i wanted to see if manuela i know manuela is translating into spanish and if the family she's talking with if you have any questions you'd like answered because i know we've been talking fast and and while you're i'm going to have manuela raise her hand if you do want to ask a question there And while while she's thinking about that, Naomi, had you had something you had wanted to add before, or you feel good? I'm I'm good for now. Thank you. Okay. No. Okay. Um, I see that Lily has another question, so we'll take Lily's question, and then I'm going to read one of the questions. Oh, and I see Chris has one, and then uh, I'll read one of the questions too that had been sent in that I haven't heard us talk about today. And then I guess it's time to wrap up, kind of. Well, it's almost time to wrap up. Um, so my question is, when are we going to get more tests for, like, the whole United States? Um, but, like, when are we going to get more tests? We don't have a lot of tests now, so I'm, I'm asking, when are we going to get more? You are asking good questions. Okay, Rachel. These are great questions. I'm so impressed with um, all of the um, kids who are on this call. So one thing we learned last night is we're hoping to test something like 500 people a day, correct me if I'm wrong, Aaron or Adam, in Boulder, um, starting in the near future. So that's compared to like the 100 to 200 that we've had available. That's going to be really um, a lot more. And then additionally, that's like testing if you're sick right now. But also we're going to have tests that are showing if you ever had the virus. And so um, it kind of, it's kind of like if you, um, for a lot of diseases, if you get it once, you're not likely to get it again in the next year or say. So we're, we're hoping that that's true of this virus. So they're gonna test a lot of people for that. And that test is not gonna be as hard to get as the test um, mm -hmm. for whether you have it, if you're sick right now. So I'm hoping that we'll be able to test a lot of people for that. Um, really soon. Those are already available. You can get those. Like if you, what we were told last night and what my doctor told me is that if you were sick, like in March or April um, with a fever and a cough, that kind of thing, then your doctor will give you the test to show you whether you had um, or can order the test for whether you had COVID. So that's already available. And hopefully a lot of people will get that um, in the next couple months. Cause you're right. Everybody's going to have to get tested. Yeah, and I'll, thanks for that, Rachel. I'll just add that we got an update um, last night from the, the folks at the Boulder Community Health Hospital and, and also from our county public health uh, people and saying that, that we are finally getting more tests. So still not as many as we would like, but um, now it's to the point where <clears throat> anyone who has the symptoms that could even possibly be, you know, the COVID-19 can get a test right away. And we're getting close to the point where we can test, say, uh, all the, the nurses and doctors on a regular basis and all the people who work at the, the um, nursing homes with the, the elderly folks. And so uh, we still got a little ways to go, but it is, it was, we got good news last night that the, the number of tests available is starting to ramp up. So that was really good to hear. Well, I want to be respectful of people's time. It's 428. And I just want to say if there are questions that didn't get answered, or if you have additional questions that come up, Kids, you can keep sending in your questions. And um, when Sarah talks, she can tell you what the best place is to send those questions to. And I wanted to thank everyone for your participation today. I am proud to be a part of this community because 
the kids and the adults are both amazing. So um, thank you all. And I'm going to turn it over to Sarah. Thank you. We really appreciate all of the questions. Um, so the best way to ask council your questions is to email them. And um, you can email all of council if you email council at Boulder, Colorado. So that's all spelled out, the word Boulder and Colorado dot gov. And all nine council members can see your questions. They can't always respond right away to every question they get because they get a lot. But those of us who are engagement will keep an eye out, especially for questions that are coming in from young people um, and see if we can maybe help them get you some answers in, a, in a, as quick a way as we possibly can. We really value hearing from you and it's super important that your voice is heard. I wanna just tell you that we're going to have another call. It's really designed for your parents. So if your parents have questions or you think they might like to talk to city council about some of the things that they're experiencing, we're going to have a call just like this one on May 28th. It's in the evening because we know sometimes parents are working from home during the day. Um, and we're going to put out some information with a way for parents to sign up. We'll have some of the same folks on the call and a couple of other people who can really talk to parents. So if your parents are, are struggling a little bit, like I am as a parent, um, you might tell them if this is a helpful thing for you to join us on the call. I also want Ryan to put up the crisis number one more time, if you don't mind, um, and just see if um, any council members have any closing, any closing thoughts. I also love this artwork that um, Mara has, has shared in the slideshow. We've had so many questions, we haven't had as much time to look at the artwork, but art is a wonderful way to express yourself as well. Rachel, did you have a closing comment to make? Um, yeah, I wanted to invite Adam to share if he had anything, because he was listening the whole time and I appreciated him being here. Um, I know Junie had to, to clock off. And also just wanted to say to all the kids who stayed on this whole call, I think you're awesome. I think it's really hard to be enduring what's what, what we're doing right now with staying at home and um, being with your parents all the time. This is a weird time of life. Um, and it, I think it's just really cool that you came on this call and um, stuck it out and asked great questions. So thanks for just being engaged, Boulder Rights, um, and stay in touch. Yeah, I would, I would say um, exactly what Rachel said as well as I'm super jealous I didn't get to be one of the, the main members of council on this call. This was probably the most fun one of all by far. And uh, I was just so impressed by the, the questions. It seems like a lot of you have features and um, pretty much whatever you want, but if it's city government, I highly suggest you, you go towards that. So um, thank you so much for everyone who attended. This was awesome. Yeah, I'll, same thing. I mean, those were great questions and um, it just made me really happy to hear your voices and hear um, about what you're thinking and what you're worried about and concerned about. Um, so I know we gave a lot of like, we're not sure answers. Um, so hopefully that wasn't too frustrating, um, you know, but we're all, we're all in this together. You know, we're all uh, at home uh, together going through this really crazy, completely different time. And so I hope it's been really wonderful being able to connect with you all today. So thanks for and coming. I see Naomi wanted to add something. Yeah, Naomi. Mind. Just one last thought for students. Thank you all for being here. It was so great to hear your voices and questions. I want to remind you that our, I'm in, I'm still working for the next week and, and the counselors are still working in your schools. So please don't hesitate to reach out to your teachers or your counselors at your school if there are questions that are on your mind about the social connections or any of the feelings that are coming up for you. We're doing a lot of that and we are very happy to continue those conversations. So I just wanted to remind you that we are still available to support you. We've also recorded this call. So we're going to actually give it to Growing Up Boulder to post on their webpage. So if you have friends or family who you think might have some of the same kinds of questions and they'd like to hear what council had to say, please invite them to listen to the video recording. And, and I will say that if anyone ends up emailing Growing Up Boulder with questions, I'll make sure they get to city council as well. Good. And Terrific. Well, thank you. We are at the end of our time together, but we really appreciate everybody's participation. I have to say this was the highlight of my week by far. So thank you to all the young people who participated. 
wonderful questions. And thank you for all of the grown-ups who tried their best to answer questions in very strange times. I hope everybody stays well, wear your masks, try to have some fun in this strange time, and we'll all connect again soon. Thank you. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye, everybody. Thank Take you. Take care. Thank you all. Stay safe.